Hey guys, welcome back to part three of this series of web scraping with R. In the last video, we kept working on our IMDB web scraping and we got all the cast members. Uh, I'll just show you real quick. We have the original four columns from the first video. We had this new column with the cast members that we got by going into each of the pages. Um, I'd recommend checking out those two videos if you haven't already, because we're going to build on that yet again with uh, this new tutorial where we're going into multiple pages. How do we scrape multiple pages of results? So uh, again, we're going to be using IMDB. And the first step is to figure out how the URL of the website is changing. So in order to scrape multiple pages, you can see that if we go down the very bottom, we go to next. This little text right here will appear that says start equals 51. And if we go to the next page, that goes to 101. So sometimes it'll say you'll be on a website and it'll be like slash page equals one slash page equals two slash page equals three and so on. And in that case, it's pretty easy. Here you can see it's incrementing by 50 each time because it's showing us all the results on the page. Uh, and if we go back to that very first page, we can go back twice. You can see that there's no number. You'd expect it to say one but we can kind of trick it into doing that and showing us the first result, which is actually gonna be super useful for this tutorial. So we figured out how the URL changes and uh, essentially what we're gonna do is make a for loop that will go through each of the pages we wanna scrape, then just do everything that we did before. So not super hard, but there are a few components to it. So we figured out how the URL changes. We can copy this new link which is gonna be slightly different than this previous link because it includes the, the page, the result number that we're on. So we will comment that out. Uh, actually, we can just get rid of it. Cool. Uh, and then we just need to create a big for loop outside of everything. And I know I said in the last video that like the S apply function or L apply function is more preferable to for loops, but I mean, for this situation, it just kind of makes sense for me to use a for loop but you can totally do it the way that you feel most comfortable. So I'll create a for loop and we'll create a variable called page result. So this needs to go from one to 50 to one, or sorry, one to 51 to 101 to 151 and so on and so forth. And you could uh, make a character vector or uh, rather a numeric vector that is literally you typing out manual stuff. But if you want to go to like a thousand and one, you, would spend a lot of effort doing that. So instead, I'm gonna use a sequence command and I'll go from one to, uh, I could make this a thousand and one and it would give us a lot of pages, but just for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna do the first two pages. So 251 and by 50. And if we just run that, you can see that the output is 151. And let's say this, this was a thousand and one, that would give us the uh, corresponding results that we need. But let's just do 51 for the video and add our braces. And then essentially we can put uh, everything inside the for loop, but let's first get the link back. So we have that, that new link uh, that has this start equals one, but we actually need to make sure that that link is changing as each page result goes uh, as it increases. So we're gonna use the paste command again here and we're gonna paste back in that link and then we're gonna get rid of the one, add some quotes to separate these guys out and then in between the, the equals and then the next ampersand, we're gonna add page result. So let me make it so you guys can see that, just like that. And we know that paste by default adds a space between all the text, and we'd have to add this sep equals quotes. Uh, alternatively, you can just use the paste zero command, which by default will uh, get rid of spaces between the strings that you're trying to concatenate. Cool. So we got our link. Now we can copy over or cut over our page, because that's the same. And Essentially, all of this stuff 
is also going to be exactly the same. So no need to change that. We can just put that right there. Now, get cast this function, we could put it in the loop, um, except it would just be, it, it's just, it doesn't change each time, it's just one function. So we're going to move that outside of the loop so it doesn't rerun each time. And we do want to keep our cast. We want to keep that column. But we also want to keep our movies. Now, the issue here is uh, movies is set to a data frame and every single time this loop runs it'll reset movies so right now if i were to run all this code and i output movies it would actually only output the last uh the last 50 results so the second page of movies that's not exactly what we want we're going to need to create a movies data frame that'll just be empty and then instead of overwriting it each time by strictly setting it equal to a data frame, we're gonna use the rbind function, which means row bind. And it'll take, uh, first argument will be movies. And the second argument will actually stay this data frame. So now each time this, this uh, for loop runs, it'll take whatever the old movies variable was and then just put on the new rows of movies that it got from this new page that it's running on. So that's really about it. The last thing I'm gonna add is just a print statement at the end here. And this is solely for the purpose of tracking progress. I mean, I mentioned in the last video how the cast, cast command, cast function that we're doing, it takes some time to run because it's going into every single one of these movies and figuring out who the cast members are. So you might be wondering, like if your code's running for 20 minutes, if it's like actually running or if it just got stuck on something. So having a print is really good. Just printing the page results is good enough. So I'll go ahead and run this and hopefully it works. It should actually take some time to run, but I'll come back when that's finished and we can see what it looks like. Awesome, so my code finished running. It just took a couple minutes, not too bad. Uh, let's go check out what our movies data frame looks like and hopefully we have more than 50 results looks like we do let's just confirm that this is actually movies from the second page yep jurassic park is 51 and looks like that looks good yeah awesome so we have 100 results that's from the first two pages of imdb or from whatever this these movies are um it's really easy to change this to do multiple pages. If I wanted to literally go to like all 1,070 titles, it wouldn't be super hard to do. Uh, I just need to edit this too. But that's about it for this video. So thanks so much for watching. And uh, again, I'll probably have another video for whatever the next part is. I think it's gonna be on scraping tables with Arvest. So hopefully I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.